This video investigates the size of the opening angle for light released in the region just beyond the Schwarzschild radius. The opening angle is that between the radial direction and that of the actual path taken by an individual light ray. This angle is measured relative to the orthonormal basis vectors that form the observer's frame at the location of the source of light. So, let's say we have a light source placed in the region just outside the Schwarzschild radius, anywhere around here. And for the sake of the diagram, I've just picked along the horizontal axis here, just for illustration purposes. But this entire circular region around the Schwarzschild radius, the light source could be placed anywhere within there. Uh, so anywhere within this range, 2 gm on c squared, the Schwarzschild radius up to 3 gm on c squared, or one and a half times the Schwarzschild radius. So anywhere around here, but just for visualization purposes, it's easy to, to put it on this diagram here on the horizontal axis here, at 2.5 gm on c squared. And we want to know between what is the angle between this radial direction here, the horizontal axis, and the light ray. So a source is emitting light in all directions. What part of this will escape? How much of this, this angle here, which also extends out the other side here, obviously, by symmetry out the other side here. So what angle will this sign make, this opening angle with respect to the radial direction and the actual light ray itself? And how will that change as we go from 3 gm on c squared, one and a half times the Schwarzschild radius, right down to the Schwarzschild radius itself? Now, so what is the critical angle site critical that each light ray makes with the radial direction in general, and beyond which light rays cannot escape and must fall back upon the Schwarzschild mass? So those light rays which come out here and here below the source here or above the source here, they are beyond the critical angle and therefore they fall back onto the Schwarzschild mass. Those released within the critical angle, less than psi here, they will escape off to infinity. So it's this angle we want to find. Alright, so let's start with the equation of motion for light. And this is just recapping what's been in the previous video. So the magnitude before velocity squared, this object here, and expanding this out is equal to zero for light. And let's expand this out in terms of its metric components, uh, g00 and g11 and so on. And here's the tangent vectors in each direction in the coordinate basis. And when we do that, we expand that out here, like that, and simplifying that down. Uh, dr d lambda is u r, uh, d theta d lambda is u theta, d phi d lambda is u phi, and so on. Okay, let's go a bit further. Now this is just a recap of previous videos doing this. Um, now for motion in the equatorial plane that we're interested in, theta is pi on 2 and d theta is 0, so that simplified our equation of motion down here. And then in previous videos we found the two killing vectors, one which gave us an expression for the energy, another one for angular momentum L, and uh, we this then simplified this equation of motion then came down to this one here uh, which we then investigated in previous videos but just recapping again if we multiply through by one on l squared this object here we found the effective potential to be this object and let's just keep going uh, continuing further rearranging this taking the square root of both sides plus or minus and uh, putting back the effective potential, here it is over here, and we had plus or minus L times this object here. And B was the impact parameter, if you remember, but more particularly its relationship, it was uh, in units of light units, it was LC on E for B, and that's all in the previous video. Keep going. So, velocity component in the radial direction is this object here, the outer lambda is this, and in the phi direction, that component of the four velocity is this object here, all right, where u phi is L on R squared. Now we imagine an observer at the location of this source, and this observer analyzes the motion of a light according to an orthonormal basis at his or her location, which he, she carries with his or herself wherever they go. So an observer in space-time has their own local to them, very local to a small region of space time around them, they have their own orthonormal basis. Now, the two orthonormal basis vector components we need here are uh, the R component in the R direction and the phi component in the phi component, uh, phi direction, sorry. Um, now, these are the 
orthonormal basis components. Components. I'll come to the vectors later. <laughs> All right. Now the components of the four vectors are measured in the direction of the orthonormal basis vectors corresponding to the observer's local frame. So you have the four velocities, components, and the basis vectors in the coordinate basis, not in the orthonormal basis. And if we want to find the component that the observer at the source measures, then we find the scalar product of the four velocity with the basis vector that we're interested in, the particular orthonormal basis vector. That's what the hat means, the orthonormal basis vector. So we're projecting it along the particular axis of interest. If we want to measure the radial component or the speed or the angular component, the azimuthal angle, angular component, then we'll put that particular basis vector in. And when we do that, u mu, e mu dot, whichever one we're interested in, gives us that particular component that we measure. The radial component of velocity, the angular, azimuthal angular component of velocity. Now we can find the critical angle through the ratio of the angular component motion to the radial component. And both these components are in the orthonormal basis, hence the little hat above them. Because that's what the observer at that location will measure. They are measuring relative to their orthonormal basis. So their, whichever direction they have, x, y, z, phi, r, what have you, they're measuring relative to that axis. Now, the orthonormal basis in the radial direction, e, r, hat, is that component times the coordinate vector, coordinate basis vector. e, phi, hat is this component times the coordinate basis vector. Alright, let's go on. So u dot e phi hat is this e phi in the coordinate basis, e phi hat in the orthonormal basis. When we do that, we're interested in these components. So we get the 1 on r you saw earlier, this. And when we expand that u phi 1 on r e phi dot e phi, u phi 1 on r g phi phi is u phi hat. So u phi hat is this object here. We saw this earlier, so we get g phi phi is r squared, u phi, as we saw earlier, is l on r squared, and this component of the uh, orthonormal basis vector e phi hat, the phi component of that is 1 on r, is l, so that gives us l on r. Next bit, in the radial direction, same thing. Let's carry out this scalar product. This object here, remember that component from earlier? times the coordinate basis vector r. We get this object here, this, this er dot er, then the coordinate basis is grr, ur times this component here, right. and that gives us ur hat. So the radial component velocity in the orthonormal basis, the observer, that's like the thing they measure. All right, now the Schwarzschild style metric components are, just adding this in, just to remind you, now ur hat is grr, ur this, now grr, that object there goes here, ur we found from earlier, here we go, and from previous videos of course, and this component here is this one, so when we multiply those together we get this object here. Our next step then is the tan of that, to find the critical angle is this on this, and we get this object here, the L's cancel out and we're left with this. Okay, next step now, what sort of values can we get for psi as our next step? All right, oh, and just before we do that, in the previous video we found the condition for photons to escape when emitted in this region from 2gm on c squared to 3gm on c squared, we found that 1 on b squared had to be greater than the value of the effective potential at this point, which was this. And so that leads to the result with tan psi critical is u phi hat on u r, of course. And where we had 1 on b squared here, we substitute this object in to here, minus that. And then we're going to look now at some angles. What sort of angles can we get for a light source placed at different locations just outside the Schwarzschild radius? All right. Well, one of the things we find when we plot that, the angle in degrees here, uh, and the distance from the Schwarzschild radius out to one and a half times the Schwarzschild radius. When we plot that, we find that at one and a half times the Schwarzschild radius, the opening angle is 90 degrees. 
and as we decrease towards the Schwarzschild radius, less and less light escapes in the angular direction until we reach the Schwarzschild radius itself, where a photon must be launched purely in the radial direction if it is to escape out to infinity. So the opening angle at the Schwarzschild radius is zero. And so uh, for a photon to escape to infinity, being released from the Schwarzschild radius, it has to be released in a purely radial direction only. And just looking at individual values here, if we start at 3 gm on c squared, and we get the opening angle of 90 degrees, as you might, you might expect. But as we move now inwards, as r decreases, you can see the angle slowly decreases, slowly, slowly, in line with the plot we see on the left, um, until we come down to 2.2. It's 45 degrees, or a bit over. 2.1, it drops again. 2.05, very, very close to the Schwarzschild start radius. It's 23.32 degrees. Keep going down 2.01, it's at 10.51 degrees. Keep going down 2.0001, 1.05 degrees, until we get down to almost just above the, well, incrementally above the surface, and we're down to 0 0.01 degrees. And finally, when we hit the Schwarzschild start surface itself, the opening angle is zero. And the only photons that will escape to infinity from that region must be in the purely radial direction. And that is that. Just one point on that orthonormal basis, and observers, I'll pick up that in a future video.